Well, think about the pioneers. Mm -hmm. They were alone in their thoughts. They were strategizing. They were creative. They were storytellers. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the distractions uh, because they didn't have that technology interference. Mm -hmm. Now, in all of these years, what's it been? Um, I would say for the last um, 80, 90 years, the advancements have been so great that we've moved completely away from the feeling body. Yes. And the feeling body is basically uh, your steering wheel. Yes. And when you're in that deeper state of quietness, uh, and I call it the sanctuary of silence, mm -hmm. this other sen sensory system that mm -hmm. we're born with starts operating. Yes. And if you're in a culture that trains you to stay away from that, then I will tell you that, in my opinion, we are going to have a generation of very ill, emotionally, physical, physically ill people, because it's all tied in. It's a nucleus. It's all tied in. Yes. So if you can't get quiet and you can't control your nerves, and if you're dealing with these kind of stresses, then your body is quietly taking it on. So you're there helping them, you know, open up the files. Yes. And explore comfortably, as safely as possible, uh, things about themselves that they never, ever knew. That's exactly it. You know, we were talking about manifestation, and you're talking about this disconnect from the feeling body, and what that results in is manifesting illness, yes, nervous disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, because we are ignoring and neglecting our div divining rod, the thing that tells us exactly where we need to be going for our best life's journey. The body talks. Yes, honestly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you've got a headache, there's usually uh, a, a emotional mm -hmm. reason. There can be a cycle. There can be a, a physical reason. I mean, just the heat we're having and the humidity and sure. and all of that that can cause a problem bio, biochemically. But most of the time, if our body, if we're listening to the body talk, then we will be able to discover for ourselves why we have the pain in the neck, Yes. why we have possibly reoccurring sore throats, yes. why we have problems with the eyes, hearing, uh, pressure uh, ar around the head that mm -hmm. comes in and uh, um, vertigo. Yes. So there's a lot of things that are going on but if you ignore them, then you're not going by the speed limit, which says slow down. Mm -hmm. You've just stepped on the accelerator, and you're going faster. And I say, there's a curve coming up. Yes, and we're driving asleep. Yes. You know, if you want to take what you're saying even one step further and put it into an energetic or a multidimensional realm, that headache might not be yours at all. There's transfers. Absolutely. Energetic transfers from current life experiences, current life connections. It might be something from a past life that is coming through for you to resolve that issue now so you don't continue to carry it forward. So when we tune into our body, we can sort out the source of the headache. Is it mine or someone else's? Right. And if let's find out, let's say it's your neighbor's. Goodbye. The uh, <laughs> reflexology. Yes is such an incredible tool to discover some of, of those answers. Why do you think it's so difficult in our society for people to appreciate and accept the most magnificent and simplest tools in which to get those kind of answers? That, uh, that, I think we're, co we're co-dependent on Western medicine in such a way now that uh, we're, we're getting more and more open to go holistic. But I was telling a friend the other day, I, I don't understand if you are diagnosed with something, why you're not doing your own research. Why aren't you going on the web and why aren't you maybe looking at two or three other people's opinion mm -hmm. and looking at what else is out there? 
I mean, I was talking to a woman today on the East Coast, and she said that when her daughter was about seven or eight years old, she was having some problems with her thyroid, and they radiated her thyroid. Mm. And I said, you mean they killed their, her mm -hmm. thyroid? She said, yeah, they radiated her thyroid, and nobody could be around her for about a week. And I'm listening to this, and maybe, I, maybe there's a bigger picture that I don't understand, but my gut feeling was uh, there's something wrong, if, if, and maybe that's all they knew to do. But holistically, uh, a, do a, a, a holistic doctor would be hearing this. They did what I did. I got nauseated mm -hmm. thinking about this child lost her thyroid completely yes. through radiation. It all started with the conversation about taking kelp oh. because of the radiation that may be still in our environment and, and how good it is for you and mm -hmm. how simple it is it's available mm -hmm. and how it helps the thyroid because mm -hmm. there's an epidemic uh, of thyroid problems. And as a therapist, what would you say? I'm going to ask you a question okay. that you don't know. Good, I'm ready. What is behind the thyroid shutting down in your opinion? I don't know that I have a specific generalizable answer. I would say... Yeah. Well, the best you can do. Well, the How best I can do really is that it depends on the client. That well. being said, I think that there is an emotional disconnection from our body and a spiritual disconnection from our body. And so that in conjunction with all of the toxic elements on our planet that we keep pouring into it right. really breaks down each and every body part. It just depends on where you live, where the wind was blowing, you know, what was on the wind, and your emotional state when you were in the middle of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have experienced psychically talking to people's organs. Yes. And, and their inner child, um, and teaching them how to do that for themselves. Beautiful. And to me, it goes to directly to the heart of the matter uh, because there is this information sitting there waiting for that person to access that part of their body. Yes. And if they don't have the tool or they don't know that they can do that, then they may choose to be taking something into their body that adds more of a, a disconnect, um, you know, to me, antidepressants. Mm -hmm depress the emotional body but help balance you out but there's a price to pay and that condition doesn't change it's just subdued so um, I just think that the, to me the thyroid is in this part of yes. the body this is the communication yes. center okay if you were a child that was made to feel invisible or not be heard or not be seen and didn't have a voice it starts very very young mm -hmm. It's also at this point right here on the body where I'm pointing, yes. where the life force energy separates and moves through the chakra system to communicate with the cells. And I bet most people didn't realize that you can take and tap uh, very, very hard. Yes. Uh, tap yourself 12 times and you've just boosted your immune system. Yes. I mean, to me, tapping myself 12 times versus taking any pill, mm -hmm. hello, this makes sense to me. Let alone cutting a piece of yourself out or irradiating it so that you never have it to heal. Or just the cost of yes. expense of, of having to buy something and take it when you can be literally tapping into your own system. Mm -hmm. And that education is out there. Oh, yes. In fact, I would mention Donna Eden as a person oh, who... <laughs> the goddess to me. Indeed. I'm, oh, uh, she's my hero. She should be. She's a beautiful woman, and she has brought a wealth of information that is simple to access and use for, for self-healing. For years, I've been doing certain things through um, osmosis. Uh, osmosis. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I didn't know how I knew but I trusted it mm -hmm. and I would be doing this and then one day I watched one of her tapes and I went oh my god the confirmations yes. were so beautiful and I, I really suggest anyone that is interested in the healing field you want to heal yourself you want tools 
um, please check out Donna Eden's work. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And she's got the most beautiful field around her. You know that she's coming from a, um, a heart-soul connection. Yes. Uh, an angel on earth, really. I agree. Okay. So um, let's talk about resident therapy okay. specifically. Mm -hmm. And there's some aspect for grounding in this, isn't there? Yes, I, I think I would preface that by saying I first became aware of resonance therapy with my own work with Dr. Sierra Levy. She is the creator of this system. Okay. And the system of resonance therapy is really great for a couple of things. First, it helps you to tailor make interventions for clients. Wow. So instead of using cookie cutter techniques, which really are helpful, but not always getting to the heart of the matter quickly, either Western or Eastern. It really can drill it down to, oh, this is exactly about your thyroid when you were four, and now we're gonna treat it with this vibrational homeopathy or an electrical current or a special word that has intent behind it. It's really specific. And that gets to the core issue and resolves it quickly. The other thing resonance therapy is great for is really creating a map so that the practitioner, be it yourself or somebody else, doesn't get lost in the information. Yes. I know as a psychic, both of us, there's so much information. Sometimes it can be hard to sort out what's important and what isn't. Well, in my experience, it moves through very quickly and I don't feel as though I'm sorting. It feels like their spirit mm -hmm. uh, guide or my guide is sorting and I don't, uh, I'm paying attention, mm -hmm. but it does move so quickly yes. that I, um, I have a hard time harnessing all the information and I, and sometimes I have to take notes, yes. but your system sounds like I'm going to investigate it. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm coming from a practitioner sam standpoint. If I were channeling information, I probably wouldn't worry about tracking it, but they're looking to resolve something. People come to me to resolve issues. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're looking to resolve it now. And so, and you know that. So resonance therapy has two components to it that I would like to talk about with you that really help get a good read about what is the most important piece. Right. The first is having to do with your body compass. And we're gonna get to the grounding in just a second. We are in these bodies. And so we need to respect them and make sure they're functioning real time when we're doing treatments. This is from a resonance therapy perspective. Right. Um, of course, other people don't worry about things like that, and maybe they don't need to. No problem. Um, the first thing is we are remarkably electrical beings, and so we have to be hydrated so that electricity flows and, and flows well. Say that again so they hear you. Okay. That's big. It's huge. If we are not hydrated, it is literally like flipping a circuit breaker and you don't get the information you need in your body compass to figure out your way. So, hydration is number one. Second is polarity, and that has to do with our electromagnetic field. Anywhere there's electricity, there's a magnetic field. Right. So we have to make sure that those poles are flowing appropriately. We have a plus and a minus, and they need to be in the right places. If they're not, it's really akin to putting a battery into something backwards. Yes. It fits, but it doesn't work. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you get no result. So after hydration and polarity are on and flowing well, we really tune in with clients to make sure that we're getting a solid yes response using kinesiology or energy testing and a solid no yes. response. Because if yes isn't yes, there could be a lot of things that need to be resolved before treatment even begins. They could be reversed, meaning they're having so much fear about what is happening, they can't flow properly. Everything's kind of chaotic. So we use some simple techniques to get the reversals undone and move forward. It's so exciting. that's exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. Really, I'm excited about this. I'm wondering why I haven't heard about this before. Me too. <laughs> yeah, where have I been? <laughs> well, you know, I think that the world has been waiting for a lot of different things to come at the time they needed to. You're right. 